Now, Blender Beginner Basics, assigning a texture and a material to an object. Now, a couple of things to note before we begin. If I hit Z on my keyboard, I'm going to see a rendered view. Then, in terms of viewport display, I'm going to see solid view, material preview, and wireframe. So if I'm in wireframe or in solid mode, then I'm not going to be able to see the updates that happens on my screen when I assign a material. So make sure that you are either in material preview down here or in rendered view up here. Um, now I can assign materials through navigating down these icons until I see the material properties that is this little marble with the checkered sign. So before I assign um, a material I have to make sure that at least one of my viewports is the shader editor. Now if you have not got the shader editor um, in your viewport and you have any other viewport and you can simply right click and split an area and make sure that one of your areas is the shader editor I normally find working with my objects here working with my UV editor here and working with my shader editor here is a nice layout um, and that way I can see all the primary contributors to the screen. So, if I select my cube that I have here, to be able to assign a material to that, I have to hit New in the Material Properties, and then what you will see here is that would give me a principled BSDF material. Um, with all its little input nodes. Now I'm not going to go into a lot of depth but this is probably the most complete shader that you have in Blender. There are other shaders that you can use. Um, there's the Diffuse BSDF, the Glossy and a number of others um, but for now this is the most complete one that you can use. Um, over here you can rename your material. I'm just going to call it Matt 001 and what you will see is you have a base color option so in base color it does exactly what it says it does I can assign different colors to that object um, for now let's keep it red then the next one down the important one to note is specular level so base color we've done that now specular level specular level if I hit rendered mode and I am in rendered mode actually is going to control the level of shininess to that object and that object's corners. Um, so maybe just boost this light a little bit and move it to where I can see a corner or a number of corners in a better way. So what you'll see is specular level tightens and broadens the specularity of an object. You'll see the, the specular highlight has now pretty much vanished where if I scroll the specular level up, the specular highlight appears and if I scroll it up further, it becomes wider. The specular highlight becomes a lot wider. So this controls the tightness and broadness of your specular level um, and you'll see something like a ceramic cup on the rim has got a very tight specular level whereas something like a, um, a varnished piece of wood when you're viewing it from a low angle has a very broad specular level. So base color, specular level, those are the ones to note so far. The next important one is roughness. Now roughness controls how smooth or rough an object is and now what you'll find with a smoother object the specular level will be a lot more apparent so roughness and specular is very often used in conjunction with each other. So right now if I up the specular level here but I down the roughness 
In other words, I create a very smooth object, almost like glass, then the specular level will display as if it is reflecting on something like glass or something that has a zero roughness element. If I take the roughness all the way up, then you'll see what happens with the specular level. Um, it's almost that it has the light information, but it is devoid of any of the shininess. So that is what roughness does. So for now, the next important one to take note of is your emission. Um, so on emission strength, you can crank that all the way up or down and you will probably not see any effect right now because it's black so when I change emission to something like white then um, this object will start to actually emit the color uh, that I can see in my emission strength now this is very useful if you're modeling fluorescent lights or any other sort of um, object that emits light in, a, in, an, in an environment. So emission is quite an important one. Uh, if I set this to zero, then there will be a zero emission. If I set it to one, it'll be uh, almost a full emission. And then if I hit any color, it will emit whatever color it is that I am asking it to emit. If I set it back down to black, emission will become zero. Your alpha is also an important one. Now it controls the transparency of an object. So if alpha is zero then your object would be invisible. If it's 0.5 your object would be semi-translucent. Translucent, sorry, it's the morning coffee. I haven't had one mine yet. Um, if I hit one then I can object is fully visible. So in terms of having your first day almost of assigning materials, just to recap, important ones to note is base color, specular level, roughness, emission, and alpha. And then lastly, I do want to touch on metallic. It's maybe not that important for now, but this controls the amount of metalness in an object. So if I create another material here, matte, double O two and I give it a grayish color and I tell it to be fully metallic then it should start reflecting some of the things in my screen and if I take the roughness down to zero you'll see what happens um, it's starting to reflect some of the other objects in here um, we let's assign the same material to this and you'll see what happens as the floor is reflecting in here the monkey is reflecting in there and the other object is reflecting in there so that is what metallic does it gives you like a mirror chrome ball almost effect um, so the next step we've done the very basics of applying a shader with only color data to an object. So the next step is let's assign some image textures to these shaders.